Paramahamsa Paramakasharya Sutta Satishishi Mahathya Sivayan Grace Shila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Nita Gaur Pramanandi So today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 2 Chapter 9 Text 2 and the um, chapters entitled Answering the Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Bahurupa eva bhati Bahurupa eva bhati Mayaya bahurupaya Mayaya bahurupaya Rama mana guneshvasya Rama mana guneshvasya Mama hamiti manyate Bahurupa eva bhati Bahurupa eva bhati Mayaya bahurupaya Bahurupa multiforms. Eva as it were. Abhiti manifested. Maya by the influence of the exterior energy. Bahurupaya in multifarious forms. Ramamana enjoying as if it were. As it were. Ganeshu in the modes of different qualities. Asya of, of the external energy. Mama mine. Aham I. Iti thus. Manyate thinks. Translation. The illusion living entity appears in so many forms offered by the external energy of the Lord. While enjoying in the modes of material nature, the encaged living entity misconceives thinking in terms of I and mine. Please repeat. The illusion living entity, illusion living entity appears in so many forms, in so many forms offered, by the external energy of the Lord. offered by the external energy of the Lord. While enjoying in the modes of material nature, the encaged living entity misconceives thinking in terms of I and mine. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The different forms of the living entities are different dresses offered by the illusory external energy of the Lord. According to the modes of, of nature, the living being in desires to enjoy. The external material energy is represented by her three modes, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance. So even in the material nature, there is a chance of an independent choice by the living entity. And according to his choice, the material energy offers him different varieties of material bodies. There are 900,000 varieties of material bodies in the water, 2 million vegetable bodies, 1,100,000 worms and reptiles, 1 million forms of birds, 3 million different bodies of beasts, and 400,000 human forms. Altogether, there are 8,400,000 varieties of body in different planets in the universe. And the living entity is traveling by so many is traveling by so many transmigrations according to different modes of enjoying spirit within himself. Even in one particular body, the living entity changes from childhood to boyhood, from boyhood to youth, from youth to old age, and from old age to another body created by his own actions. The living entity creates his own body by his own personal desires and the external energy of the Lord supplies him the exact form by which he can enjoy his desires to the fullest extent. 
The tiger wanted to enjoy the blood of another animal, and therefore, by the grace of the Lord, the material energy supplies him the body of a tiger, with facilities for enjoying blood from another animal. Similarly, a living entity desires to get the body of a demigod in a higher planet can also get it by the grace of the Lord. And if he is intelligent enough, he can desire to get a spiritual body to enjoy the company of the Lord, and he will get it. So the minute freedom of the living entity can be fully utilized, and the Lord is so kind that he will award the living entity the same type of body he desires. The living entity's desiring is like dreaming of a golden mountain. A person knows what a mountain is, and he knows also what gold is. Out of his desire only, he dreams of a golden mountain. And when the dream is over, he sees something else in his presence. He finds in his awakened state that there is neither gold nor a mountain, and what to speak of a golden mountain. The different positions of the living entity in the material world under multifarious manifestations of bodies are due to the misconceptions of mine and I. The Kami thinks of this world as mine, and the Gyani, I am everything. The whole material conception of politics, sociology, philanthropy, altruism, etc., conceived by the conditioned soul is on the basis of this misconceived I and mine, which are products of a strong desire to enjoy material life. Identification with the body and the place where the body is obtained under different conceptions of socialism, nationalism, family affection, and so on, and so forth, is all due to forgetfulness of the real nature of the living entity. And the whole misconception of the bewildered living entity can be removed by the association of Sukadev Goswami, Maharaj Parikshit, as this is all explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Translation again. The illusion living entity appears in so many forms offered by the external energy of the Lord. While enjoying in the modes of material nature, the encaged living entity misconceives thinking in terms of I and mine. Yet to the Kripa Tamaham Vandeha Shigu Dinatayarinam. So this verse explains to us why we actually are in the material world. As originally, we wanted to be the enjoyers, um, as this as it explains here, I and mine, the living entity. They want to be the controller, they want to be in the enjoyer. So that's why we're here. We don't want, we didn't want to serve Krishna as a supreme Lord. We wanted to serve our senses. So the Lord has been very kind. He's, he's created this material world for us, which is 25% of the Lord's creation. And so we're here and under the powerful influence of the illusory energy and the three modes of nature, we are under this misconception of uh, I am the controller and I am the enjoyer and everything is mine. The, the same um, conception is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita as well, where Krishna says that the living entity thinks, Ishvara Hama Hambogi, I am the controller, I am the enjoyer. And, and the living entity, he goes about his, his ways and his life, and, and everything the living entity does, he's creating actions and reactions. And, and he, he doesn't know this, but there's no escaping. And by his actions, as is said here, like there's 8,400 species of life, he's creating his next body. So, like we see in the Bhagavad Gita, there, there's, a, um, there's a pictures of the four kinds of persons. The first person is the, the person he enjoys to, um, who they like to show off their body, and, um, and, and that's what they like doing. So then, why should they get the human form of life again? Because the human form of life is meant for self-realization. So this person, as it shows us in the picture, will become a tree in their next life. So then as a tree, they can stand naked for so many, many hundreds or thousands of years, so their desire is being fulfilled. And then we have the picture of the, um, of the, the, the person who sleeps, sleeps a lot. The human body, the human form, it, um, 
the person is supposed to sleep as little as possible, six hours a day, but if a person wants to sleep a, sl a lot, so why should they get this human body again, so why not become a bear? Then we have the, then we have the picture of the person who is eating meat, and so the human form of life is not meant for indulging in such degrading activities, so the tiger can just eat meat and eat blood, uh, and so then the, the human will take birth as a tiger. And then the last person it shows is the person who's very gluttonous and just very greedy and eating a lot. So then in their next life, they'll become a pig. And Srila Prabhupada, he also said that surfers, surfers are very attached to the water. They prefer being in the water more than they do on land. So in their next lives, they'll become fish. So then, you know, now they might go in the water. They have their, their wetsuits on to protect their body. But then the, in the next life, they'll have the scales. They don't need to wear a wetsuit anymore. Um, so, so yeah, the living entity with this illusion, they're trying so hard to enjoy. Uh, and and it, because they don't have this knowledge, a lot of times it's because, because they're innocent, they don't know, and they don't have any examples either. The leaders in society, they're, they're supposed to be teaching the people what, what life is about. Like we have the great Raja Rishis, like Maharaj Parikshit. When Maharaj Parikshit was in, um, when he was the king of the earth, his rule was very powerful and people were very, very satisfied and happy and they didn't engage in sinful activities. We see when, when, Cal, when Maharaj Parikshit, he saw Kali and Kali was beating the, the legs of the cow and the bull and Maharaj Parikshit was very angry and he was going to kill him. How dare you do such a thing? And Kali, he begged for his life and so Maharaj Parikshit, he spared him. And, and he said, well, you know, get out, out of my kingdom. And, and Kali says, well, where am I going to go? Everything's under your jurisdiction. And he said, okay, well, I'll give you four places where you can live, you know, where, um, where there's illicit sex, where there's gambling, where there's intoxication, and where there's meat eating. And like Kali, he knew that these places didn't exist because people were very, um, very, very satisfied. They didn't have to um, indulge in such degraded activities. So he said, give me another place. And so he says, okay, you can go where people hoard gold. So when, when there's lead, um, leaders, strong leaders who can help people, then, then people, people ha can have direction. But in today's society, the leaders are just as fallen, or if not more fallen than the general a mass of people. And, and, the, and, and the mass of people, because not, they're not worshiping the Supreme Lord, they're gliding down in the lower species of life. And it's a soul-killing civilization. In the Ishopanishad, in the third mantra, it says that um, persons, these people are known as killers of the soul because they're destroying this chance of self-realization. And I was reading this, and uh, Prabhupada was saying that um, to actually evolve through the transmigration of the different bodies, it actually takes millions of years to actually get to the human body again. So it's actually a very, very long time, and it's it's um, very rare to get this human form. And in the same purport, Srila Prabhupada is mentioning how um, the, there's a difference between the animals and the humans. And he says the, um, the humans, they're giving better facilities than the animal because a human being has more responsibility than the animal. The animal, he's thinking, oh, when I'm, how can I fill my belly? Whereas a human being, he's given better facility because his, his life is actually more important than the animal's. Not that it, that's any um, reason for exploitation. But he says, just like um, a high government officer is given more facility than an ordinary clerk, well, why is that? It's because the high, highly placed government officer, he's, he's got more responsibilities, more duties. So like the human being, he's, he's got this um, human form of body not to waste uh, and live like cats and dogs. Srila Prabhupada calls it the polished animal society because when the living entity just engages in eating, sleeping, mating and defending, there's no difference between them and an animal.
So that's why also um, the Vedanta Sutra, the first aphorism of Vedanta Sutra tells us, Atata Brahma Jigyasa. Now that you've come to this human form of life, the purpose of life is, is to inquire about the absolute truth. So, so when, when we wake up, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he sings a very nice song, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chandra Bole, Kote Nidra Dhyaho Maya, Pisa Chira Koro. He says, Lord Goranga is calling, wake up, sleeping souls, wake up. How long have you been sleeping in the lap of the witch called Maya? So for many, many innumerable lifetimes, we've been in Maya's control under the grip of the illusory, the powerful energy of the Lord. She's so powerful. And the living entity, we've been dancing like puppets on a string to the tune of, that she, she plays. And from either, generally we're under the mode of passion, we're influenced by lust, greed, anger, envy, all these terrible qualities. And these are products of the false ego. But we actually have to give up this false ego and come to the real human platform of where, where as the Vedanta Sutra tells us, that we, we're requiring, you know, what is life about? This is where human life actually begins. From the animal platform, we have to rise to the human platform. And Krishna, he'll help us from within, like Krishna is the super soul in our heart, and as, as the example is given of the two birds in the tree, one is eating the fruits, and performing all these activ activities, which is a living entity. And the other bird, the super soul, the Lord Krishna, he's witnessing the activities of the living entity. But as it mentions here, the Lord gives us, gives us our independence. He doesn't force us to love him, because love cannot be forced. And so this independence, so we can choose, do we want to love Krishna, or do we, do we want to stay in Maya? And when we decide we want to love Krishna, then Krishna will help us. And um, I was listening to a lecture of Srila Prabhupada um, a little while ago, and Prabhupada was saying, if, um, you know, we, we think that God is our order supplier, who do we think we are? But we should actually become Krishna's order supplier. We should do what he wants. And he said, if we surrender to Krishna 25%, then Krishna will reciprocate with us like that too. But then if someone else is, is surrendering more to Krishna, and Krishna is reciprocating more with them, then we should never be jealous. We should be like, oh, you know, it should be an encouragement for us to surrender as well. And, and this is our real ego, is when we actually break this misconception of I am the controller, I am the enjoyer, but actually no, Krishna, he's the controller, Krishna is the enjoyer, and, and this is the real ego. And, and, and when we realize this, we realize this through humility, because pride is the quality that makes us think, I am this body, I am the enjoyer, everything belongs to me. And, and even though the living entity is suffering so much um, you know, to fulfill his desires, he has to work so hard, and it's, mis it's a very miserable way of life. You, you know, Monday to Friday, you have to go to work. Saturday and Sunday you may help, have off and then you're back to work again and then you know you're working under people who, who may mistreat you. I remember when I was working in Govindas in Brisbane, I, I'd work with a lot of office workers and um, so many times they'd come in and they were really sad because they were getting very mistreated by their managers and um, but there's nothing they could do about it because if they did anything they would lose their jobs. So the material world it's a very um, it's a very miserable place, as, as hard as the living entity is trying to enjoy, you know. There's so many setbacks there, and, and you know, you know Prahlad Maharaj, he says this is called uh, chewing the chewed again and again. We keep trying, you know, life after life, we're trying the same thing, and we're chewing the chewed, and we're trying to get some flavor but it's not really there. And, you know, the, the real solution, which, which a lot of people don't want, is to surrender to the Supreme. And, and, and once a person surrenders to the Supreme, this is where the real enjoyment actually is, because that's the purpose of life. Um, by the mercy of the Lord, all the difficulties can, can, um, can be burnt up 
just just like um, a living entity by them performing actions, they're getting uh, they're storing these the seeds of their sin, either good or bad. It's getting stored in their hearts, so that in the future future lifetimes, these seeds they'll fructify, they'll manifest at different times, and then then the reactions will come, either good or bad. But by the process of Krishna consciousness, these seeds can actually be burnt up by the fire of devotional service. When we surrender to Krishna, Krishna says, you surrender to me and I will protect you. And, and Krishna is very, very kind. He's waiting for the living entity. When is this living entity going to turn towards me? And as soon as the living entity turns towards Krishna, Krishna will reciprocate. And so when we get this wonderful chance of coming to Krishna consciousness and following the process of devotional service and surrendering to the Lord, it's something we should make great endeavor to do because as it said, it's like the transmigration is millions of lifetimes, I mean millions of years to actually get to this human form again, it's so rare. And, and we don't use it properly, we go down. And, and the wonderful thing about Krishna consciousness is we, we, we follow the process that Srila Prabhupada has given us and, and we can see and we can feel Krishna, we can, we can experience Krishna, we can experience a pleasure that cannot be experienced in the material world because this is the, this is the, um, this is the right position. Krishna is a Purusha, we are Prakriti and when we're in this, in this um, identity of Prakriti where the service, servants of Krishna were meant to be enjoyed by Krishna, then everything becomes wonderful. And by the process of devotional service, fire, actually in the, um, in the Nectar of Devotion it says that um, the snakes of desires, they can be burnt up like just like when there's a blazing fire in the forest. Um, the snakes, the very slow, so the snakes can get burnt up. Uh, and other animals who have four legs, they can flee away, but the snakes will get burnt. So it's just like the fire of Krishna consciousness that can burn our, our, um, our desires up, and it will help, and it can help us um, become um, become more and more in our constitutional position as servant of the Lord. Um, So Lord Krishna is very kind. He's always, he's always looking for ways to help the living entity come back to him. And so we see, just recently he came as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he came as Krishna, he has these um, conditions, you know, you surrender to me. But as Lord Chaitanya, he comes and he says, you take it. Here's the fruits of love of God. Here, you take it. You know, please come, please take. And we see Lord Nityananda. He he deals with the most fallen people. He was going door to door with um, Haridas Thakur, and he people open the door. He pays his obeisance. He's flat on the floor. He grabs their feet. Please, you chant Hare Krishna. And then he they see, he sees these most fallen wretched people of um, Jagaya Madhai. And, and he thinks if, if somehow or other these fallen souls can be delivered, then the glories of Lord Chaitanya will be spread far and wide. So Lord Nityananda, he's dealing with these most, most demoniac living entities and, and, and they chase him away, you know, it's like they don't want, they don't want to know, but Lord Nityananda, he doesn't give up. It's like, please, you know, please take to the chanting. And even they attack him. And it's like, it's okay, it's okay, you know, but please, I'm begging you, please, you take to the chanting of the holy name. So the Lord is kind, he'll come again and again, and it's described the Lord um, all throughout the universe. It's like the Lord's pastimes, it's like a transcendental roadshow, that the Lord will come, he'll perform his pastimes, and when it finishes, it finishes here, then he'll go somewhere else and he'll continue performing these pastimes. So the Lord is always looking to bring the living entity back. Even though our design might not be strong, but the Lord is always looking, how can I bring the living entities back to me? You know, even though we don't want to come back, you know, because we're, 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 we're crazy. You know, we think, we think this is everything, but, but the Lord is very kind to us and um, he's there for us. 
So when we do ha come to this process of Krishna consciousness, we have to be determined and we have to follow what Prabhupada gave us. Prabhupada gave us these four principles so that we can actually come to the platform of being a human being. And we can develop good qualities. And instead of pride, of, of being the controller, being the enjoyer, we can actually learn to be humble. Because humil humility is, is an ornament of the Vaishnava. Lord Jaitanya, he says that this verse of Tanada peace in each and our Torah peace of Hishana, Amarana Manadana Kirtana Sadahari, one should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and he should be ready to offer all respects to others. And in such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So Lord Chaitanya said this verse we should string it and we should wear it as a garland around our neck because it's very important, this humility. And when we read the when we read the um the songs of the Acharyas and the prayers of the Acharyas, the that's the thing that really jumps out of you is that humility and it's like I'm so fallen, I'm so wretched, please my Lord, please you save me and it's not like they're just saying this because it sounds good but, it, but they really mean it and, and they're such exalted, exalted souls but there's a beautiful prayer by Narottam Das Thakur, it's called Garanga Karunakura I am plunged amidst the violent hurricane um, of waves in the ocean of this material world from which there is no escape. Kindly give me the gift of your divine lotus feet, which are compared to a boat in which your servant may cross over the ocean of birth and death. So this is the mood of the Vaishnavas and we see actually in that beautiful prayer that Srila Prabhupada wrote when he was coming to America, he's like, his, his mood of helplessness and dependence of the Lord, it's very, um, it's very heart-rendering. Prabhupada saying, how am I going to make them understand this message? It's only by your mercy, my Lord, I'm just a puppet in your hands. So you make me dance, make me dance as you please, my Lord. And this, this Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, the Mahabhagavat devotee, and this humility, he's so helpless. And he has such a great task to, to, to go and save the fallen conditioned souls, um, to follow the idea of his spiritual master. And he goes, and he's always depending on the mercy of the Lord. And so in spiritual life, we have to become humble too. Any, anything we can do in spiritual life, whether we can uh, distribute lots of books, maybe we're good cooks, maybe we're good pajaris, maybe, uh, you know, we're good managers, but we don't think that this is due to our own efforts, but we think this is Krishna's mercy. You know, I can't do this without Krishna. It's not due to my efforts. So when one actually turns from this false ego to the real ego, what one actually is in that position where you're Krishna, you know, I'm your servant and anything good, it's all by your mercy. You know, by myself, I can't do anything. Anything, you know, what good qualities do I have? Uh, but I have a lot of bad qualities, but by your mercy, anything I can do it is by your, is, is by your grace. So, so we should always be praying to the Lord, always serving the Lord, always thinking of the Lord, and we should always be endeavoring for perfection. This, this process of Krishna consciousness is not something that we make up, but it's, um, Prabhupada's giving us a process we follow. Uh, so from the animal platform, we have come, we come to the human platform, and from the human platform, we're coming to trying to be Vaishnavas. To be a Vaishnava, it's a very um, exalted position. But by the mercy of the Lord, by our strong endeavors, um, Krishna will help us. Like we see in the, um, the story of the Damodar pastime, we see Mother Yashoda. She's very angry at Lord Krishna and she's going to, she's chasing him. And Krishna, he doesn't want to be caught by Mother Yashoda. He's scared. He's very scared. She's going to, she's going to beat me. So Krishna's running and, and Mother Yashoda, she's running after Krishna and she doesn't, ca she can't catch him. She, he's always like one, one arm length in front of Mother Yashoda. 
And so she's running and running, and then finally she's getting very tired. And then Krishna, he's seeing, he's saying, oh, Mother Yashoda, you know, she's very tired. So, so I'll give, I'll, I'll surrender to Mother Yashoda. So, so Krishna allows himself to get caught by Mother Yashoda. And then Mother Yashoda, she, she gets rope, first she takes the, the, um, the rope from the top of her hair, the golden rope, and she, she goes to tie Krishna. And, and the acharyas say that the rope is it's short by two fingers. And um, so then she takes out the bottom rope from her hair, the golden rope, and she, she ties it on and she tries to tie Krishna again. And still the, the length of two fingers is um, short. So then she gets all the ropes in the house and it is still short by the same amount and then all you know she tells the other gopis go and get them from your houses and still as much as she tries she can't she can't um tie the rope and then finally on the last piece she's thinking this is I'm, this is the last piece i'm trying with and krishna he's saying my mother she's trying so hard so i i will you know she's going to tie me i've been naughty so I'm going to allow her to tie me. So Krishna allows the rope to, to be tied. And when, when the ropes are tied, all the other ropes will fall down. But the ropes from Mother Yashoda said, they, they, they're the two ropes that tie Krishna. And so the Acharyas are saying that these two fingers, they represent two things. One, number one, is the endeavor of the devotee. You see Mother Yashoda, she's endeavoring to tie Krishna. And, um, and her love is very pure for Krishna. And it's the only reason she wants to tie him up, up is because she wants, to, she wants her son to be a good boy. And then the second finger represents the mercy of Krishna. So um, that's, that's what Krishna consciousness is about. Is, you know, Krishna doesn't give himself to the devotee who doesn't, who doesn't actually become pure. The, the devotee, we're endeavoring and endeavoring, and Krishna gives us mercy along the way. But Krishna, like in the, in the um, nectar of devotion, when, it, when the six qualities of pure devotion are described, one of those qualities is it's rarely achieved. Because by pure devotional service, you, uh, can, uh, you can actually purchase Krishna, and Krishna comes under the control of the devotee. We see with the love of Mother Yashoda, her love is so pure. And she loves Krishna so much. And Mother Yashoda, she's always thinking of Krishna, that she's, she's churning the, 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 um, the butter. And while she's churning, she's made up songs where she's singing about Krishna. And when Krishna wakes up, Krishna comes to Mother Yashoda to be fed. Mother Yashoda, she's so absorbed in Krishna that even though Krishna's in front of her, there's no difference with Krishna in front of her and Krishna in her, in her absorption. And that is how pure her love is. And that, the, and that, is, that is the kind of love that, that, that purchases Krishna. Um, so yeah, that's why devotional service is rarely achieved, but it doesn't mean that it's not possible. It's very possible, but we have to always be endeavoring for this perfection and always endeavoring to serve and love Lord Krishna. Okay, I'm going to finish here. Sorry, it's early. It's my first class and I'm very, very sorry. It's all disjointed. <laughs> so is there any comments or any questions? Oh. I guess we can ask why do we, how do we strive to have that love for Christian like you know nothing is sort of such a good example but from where we are to where she is well to develop this love we always have to be um, chanting we always have to be praying to the Lord please my Lord please I you know I'm full of so many bad qualities in my heart it's very hard for me to love you but please you help me and the Lord he, he can destroy he can destroy all these um, all these bad qualities in our heart so that we can actually develop love but we always have to be um, striving and we always have to be reading too and by reading um, and studying Srila Prabhupada's books, but because by reading all these bad qualities within our, within our heart, they'll go. And um, so the prayers, the prayers to Lord Krishna and the mercy of the Lord, he sees our sincerity and we always have to, no matter what tests are coming our way, we always have to be dependent on the Lord. 
Uh, and then, you know, day after day, year after year, decade after decade, we're go we'll get there, you know, as long as we don't give up. Just like Srila Prabhupada, he, t he said, he said to, and Jadarani said to Srila Prabhupada, he, he said, uh, she said, oh, Srila Prabhupada, is it really true that by following the principles, by chanting our rounds, that we can go back to Godhead in this lifetime? And Prabhupada, he was looking out of the window and then he turned around with tears in his eyes and he said, do you think I would cheat you? <laughs> so, so Prabhupada, he's given us the perfect process and if we have faith in this process that we can develop this love for Krishna, it, it will happen slowly and slowly, but we, we always need to pray to Krishna because you know, it's very hard for us because we've been conditioned for so many lifetimes that, that this covering is very hard for us for it just to come out, but we have to constantly practice, you know? Just like Krishna says, you know, to control the mind is like controlling the wind, but through constant practice and detachment, you can do it. So like with constant practice, we can love the Lord, but it's all by his mercy. If anyone wants to add anything, then please. Okay, thank you very much. I'll close to Shula Prabhupada.